Hello, my pottery posse. How are you today? I hope you're doing great because every day is a great day to play with some clay. So uh, today we are going to be making this absolutely adorable little pink cup and it has a nice little area for you to rub out the paint with. Now, yes, this is tiny, but that's because I like to do watercolor portraiture and it does not require anything bigger than these brushes right here. I guess I gotta show you what I made first and the reason why we're making this video. I made this cute little paintbrush rest and that is the whole reason why we are making this video. See? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it has been such a wonderful little addition to my watercolor set and I decided that I needed a water dish to go with. So that is how we got this guy. So today we are going to be talking about sleep training. So I guess without further ado, let's get into the video. So I made this little guy using the pinch pot method. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go check out my other videos on pinch pot stuff and you'll totally get it. Then before you start this video, <laughs> make sure that the pinch pot is leather hard. If it's not quite leather hard, the slip won't stick to the surface like it's supposed to. Now there are legitimate tools for slip trailing if you're very serious about it, but I don't use it near often enough to legitimize that kind of a purchase. So I'm just using my syringe that was left over from my wisdom teeth surgery forever ago. As long as your slip is thick enough and has no lumps, your slip trailing trip will go quite smoothly. So when you mix it up, make sure that there's not a lot of run in it. It should be the consistency of maple syrup, sort of, except mud. So not syrup. But let's try this slip on our piece anyways. This test looks like it's ready, but watch what happens when I attempt my design on my piece. See, this doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. It doesn't look like a separate line, almost like a bubble on the surface, but more like it's blending into the surface and spreading out more. Ugh. Let's wipe this off and try again. Also, keep in mind that when the slip dries, it shrinks more than you think. Maybe the second try will fare better? Nope, not at all. All you've got to do to get the right consistency is either let it set overnight or several days, and then the water will separate out and you can pour it off, or you can just add thicker slip to it. I used both methods. That's much better. Thick and muddy. <laughs> okay, so when you load the syringe, make sure that there's no clumps. If one starts getting sucked up in there, you'll feel the resistance. Make sure to push that out before getting more. To be honest, it's easier if you strain it with a sieve first, but uh, I'm really lazy and I didn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> and make sure to clean off the syringe before beginning to apply the slip or you might get it somewhere unintentionally. I am going for a leaf motif so that the glaze really matches the texture. And if you mess up, just wipe it off with a damp paintbrush and then let that leftover water soak in before putting more slip on it. Or it won't have that nice bubbled over kind of look. It'll kind of meld to the rest of the surface. I went ahead and let all that slip trailing dry to leather hard and then reapplied a second layer so that it really stands out and the glaze doesn't overtake it. Then I decided I needed some little polka dots on the inside. That way I have something to rub my brush on and really truly clean it out. And I really think this is going to help me in my future paintings. But of course, in true Emily fashion, I could not make my mind up about how I wanted these in there, so uh, I redid about 10 times.
Same thing as I did for the outside, I'm going to put a second layer on all the inside dots. Now it's time for my maker's mark, which I use my specially made rubber stamp and potter's ink pad for. Now that that's done, I'm going to give this guy a foot ring using my slip. And notice that when I'm trailing the slip like this, the syringe is not at all touching the surface of the clay, but hovering over it. So the slip lays on the surface on its own. This technique will help you have more straight and even lines, believe it or not. And normally you would go ahead and bisque fire this guy, but I've already got a high firing loaded, which is the glaze that I'm going to be using on this little cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and glaze it now. Let's go ahead and get snappy with it. And here folks, it is finished. It is beautiful. I am so pleased with how it came out. But I will say though that the bottom slip ring cracked a bit and I can tell you why. I needed to even it out and I used that leveling trick where you wet a porous surface and swirl the bottom around to even it out. And I think I did it a little bit before it was dry enough to accept that much water and still retain its structure. Then I put it through a high firing and it didn't like that. So uh, just goes to show you that plasticity and dryness are key. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you loved it, make sure to uh, smash the subscribe and like buttons. Absolutely demolish them or don't. It's fine, but it's free. As long as you haven't already subscribed. Because if you subscribe and then you hit the subscribe button again, then you'll unsubscribe. And then the next video, I'll ask you to subscribe. Anyways, it's a whole mess. I love you, whether you are new or old to my channel, and uh, welcome if you are new. But I guess that's it for this one, and I'll see y'all in the next one. But until then, stay creative, my friends. Bye! <laughs> my nostrils. Why am I like this? If you're still watching this video, you are officially a Pottery Posse member. Congratulations! I don't have a prize for you! Yay! <laughs> Until the next time... <laughs> Stay creative, my friends. Bye!